Hello everyone, my name is Thomas White and this is Thomas Writes. Today I am going to be giving my thoughts on book two of the Wingfeather Saga titled North or Be Eaten. The story of this book immediately follows the events of the first book in the Wingfeather Saga and follows the Igaby children as they journey across the world to reach the Ice Prairies, a sanctuary that they hope will hide them from the villainous fangs and the Dark Lord Nag the Nameless. I thoroughly enjoyed the first book in this series. It has very likable characters, a fun world, and a really great endearing sense of humor. As such, I was eager to continue into this series and see where it goes from where the first book left off. This one's going to be a bit of a shorter review because this is more of a middle entry in the series and I want to keep it spoiler free, so I'm not going to be talking as in depth about certain plot points, but at the end of my journey through the series, I'm planning on doing a spoiler filled video in which I go over all the details of the series in depth and my thoughts on the whole thing. So for now, I hope you enjoyed these spoiler-free videos that will hopefully get you interested in reading the series for yourself. And for people who've already read the series, I hope this tides you over until the spoiler video comes out. Before we get into it, just a quick reminder that if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. I post new videos every Saturday, and comment down below on what you think of the Wingfeather Saga and what other book series you would like for me to tackle. And with that, let's get into it. First, I'm going to start off by talking about the positives, and for me, this book improves off of book one of the Wingfeather Saga in every way imaginable. The characters are more fleshed out, the story pacing is a lot better, we have a lot more forward momentum to the plot because it's more of a quest narrative in this book, which I, I'm always a sucker for, so that works very well for me. We also get a lot of fun new characters added into the group. I would say my favorite new characters are Merrily and the Florid Sword. Merrily is a lot of fun because she's this scrappy girl who's lived out in the wilderness who doesn't really understand the customs of people who live in towns, and so she has this very sort of rough around the edges, rough and tumble kind of personality that brings an interesting dynamic to the rest of the group of characters. And the Florid Sword is just a really fun character because he's like a parody off of Zorro, the Scarlet Pimpernel, Wesley from The Princess Bride. Uh, he's a parody of off of all these classic swashbuckling heroes, and so he talks with this hilarious uh, Old English style accent that's really funny. Andrew Peterson performs that part so well and I just really enjoyed that character. We also get a lot of great development for our already pre-established main characters. Specifically, I would say that kind of the side quest that Janner goes on and his journey of personal discovery and coming to grips with how he relates to his brother, all of that was really good. I also really liked seeing how Tink had a different perspective on how he should live up to his family's legacy, and the journey that he goes through I was not expecting at all to happen. His character goes in a way that was very shocking, but has added a whole new level of intrigue to the story. We also get a great deal on Poto's backstory, and that is probably some of the most emotional stuff in the book. The climax involving him and him having to come to grips with his past deeds was very heartwarming and just a really great way to end the book. I remember somebody in the comments of the last video telling me that the ending of book two was one of their favorite book endings, period. And I can see why. I, do, I wouldn't say I'm quite to that level of enjoyment with it, but it was a solid, impactful ending that I really enjoyed, and it set up a lot of great threads to continue on for the rest of the series. We also get to learn more about Arthur. No, his name's not Arthur. We also get to learn more about Artham and his backstory, why he is the way he is, which also ties into the origin of the Fangs, 
which I found to be quite shocking uh, in terms of how dark it was for a children's story. It's pretty sad when you learn the origin of these evil creatures, but again, it adds another level of intrigue to the universe. I'm very curious to see how that affects the rest of the story moving forward, because so far it's been a pretty clear cut and dry black and white good versus evil narrative but this element that gets introduced kind of throws a wrench into some of that, and I'm very curious to see how that pays off. And just like with the first book, the humor continues to be strong. As I said earlier, the Florid Sword is a really funny character. The banter between the Fangs is a lot of fun, and the banter between the family is really strong. I can see how this series is so beloved by children, as the humor is childish enough to where kids will enjoy it, but it isn't dumbed down for adults. Adults can still appreciate a lot about the humor. And now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the negatives. And for me, there was only kind of one standout negative aspect of this book for me. And without spoiling exactly what happens, this book falls into the trope of bringing back a character from a near-death experience only for that character to then die later on. And for me, that's not a great trope to fall into. I, I feel like that if you're going to save a character in a miraculous way, that should continue on. You shouldn't then go back on that later, especially when the initial first death, so to speak, was so emotionally resonant. And then to go back and then try to pay that off again doesn't really work for me. It wasn't a huge problem. It didn't completely take me out of the story. And the story moved forward working with that plot point. But that was just something that didn't really work for me. And now I'm going to go ahead and give my final rating. And overall, North or Be Eaten is a even stronger entry in the Wing Feather Saga than the first book. The characters are more fleshed out, the plot is better paced, the new characters that are introduced are all fun, and it ends in a very climactic and emotionally satisfying way, while still leaving enough dangling threads that I'm eager to see where it goes next. Not everything in it worked for me, but it was really good, and I'm very eager to see where it goes next. So I'm going to give this one 4 out of 5 stars. The series continues to get better as I progress through it, and I'm really eager to see how it all wraps up at the conclusion. Thank you to everyone who has recommended this series to me. I wanted to add on as well that once I complete the series, I'm planning to put out a video in which I go more in depth on spoilers for the series and just give my overall take on the series as a whole once I've finished it so that for people who've already read the books, they can engage with a video like that in a more intimate way than the spoiler-free videos. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below on what books you would like to see me read in the future and your own thoughts on the Wingfeather saga as a whole. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.